good morning and good afternoon and welcome from, from our site. My name is Thomas Spengler. I am the market manager for food analysis solutions at Brucker Biospin. Hello, welcome from my side too. Um, I am Leah Heinz, uh, working as product manager um, for NMR Solution for Food Analysis. The title uh, of today's presentation is Ensuring Authentic Honey and Global Trade. This is the agenda of today's presentation. I will cover the first part and will explain the impact of economically motivated adulteration in honey and the need for multi-marker and non-targeted methods to tackle it. Leah will give an overview about current techniques used for testing honey and will then introduce the NMR and why it is a powerful technique for authenticity testing in honey. She will highlight the importance of having global databases and applying best practices for the development of methods for authenticity control. Leah will also introduce the Food Screener platform and the Food Screen Essential Honey, a new and cost-effective solution dedicated to honey packers and honey analysis. In the context of the recent released new honey profiling 3.0 method, she will explain how the markers are identified and how the different tests for detection of sugar syrup and verification of origin work in the honey and this method. At the end, I will give you some examples of recent adoptions by different stakeholders and why they adopted NMR. According to the food fraud database maintained by the compliance management company, the Cernis, honey is the third most faked food uh, product behind milk and olive oil. The honey supply chain is complex and particularly vulnerable to fraudulent activities. Despite regulatory efforts, governmental agencies and trade organizations have struggled to ensure safe, high quality and correctly labeled honey in the international market. The lack of more robust control mechanisms for authenticating honey, which include new analytical techniques and a database of authentic samples, as recommended by the European Commission, continue to incentive fraudsters. In the past decade, the beehive productivity decreased by approximately 50%, which has led to an increase in production costs. The decrease in beehive productivity is due to several challenges faced by the beekeepers, such as exposure of the bees to chemicals, parasites and pathogens, as well as losses in plant diversity, the deterioration of bees' natural habitats and adverse climatic conditions. These factors are the cause of the bee health problems and high bee mortality rates. While the global demand for honey has been increasing, the prices of raw honey decreased. Look, looking at the graphic at the right side, the number of beehives in the four main eastern exporting countries only grew by, only grew by 13% from 2007 to 2017, while the export volume increased by over 200%. So how was such an increase possible when these countries also faced the same challenges related to the hive productivity as other countries? The drop in raw honey prices paid to beekeepers can neither be attributed to a global increase in beehive numbers nor to a decrease in the demand of the product. The strong and difficult to justify increase of honey exports in the eastern countries, along with information coming from official bodies, gives indication that fraud is happening and is responsible for the injection of a very important volume of cheap produced and diluted honey to the market. Fraudsters are becoming more and more sophisticated and unscrupulous. Sugar syrups used to stretch and adulterate honey are offered in sites like Alibaba and even include information which tests they can pass. These syrups are up to 10 times cheaper than raw honey, allowing high profits to be made, while the fraudsters know that controls in several countries are outdated or do not take place at all. Techniques used are often not able to detect new modes of adulteration, hence the risk to get caught is very low. Not even a global pandemic like COVID-19 can stop the fraudsters. This is an extract from the article published at the Grocer beginning of this year. The security of the global food supply chain has been disrupted by the impact of the COVID-19, opening up new opportunities for fraudsters. Motivation, motivation of criminals to commit food fraud for the purpose of increasing profits has increased. 
Reports from Europol suggest increased food fraud in global food supply chains due to diminished level of surveillance. The data from first half of 2020 was compared with same period in 2019, and the worst hit categories were spirits, wine, and also honey. Analysis by the government-backed Food Authenticity Network found a 37% rise in food fraud cases taken from official sources and media reports. Last but not least, also Wageningen Food Safety Research Institute found in their research that food supply chains were increasingly vulnerable to fraud as a result of the disruption caused by the uh, pandemic. There is a need to prevent food fraud during the pandemic to protect the consumer's trust and maintain safe, fair and sustainable business practices. The next slides will show the impact of economically motivated adulteration in honey. Honey is part of the higher value food items which are often the target of economically motivated adulteration. The adulteration has an impact on the prices of honey and the viability of the beekeeping industry. It damages reputation uh, of companies, regions, and countries, and erodes consumers' confidence. Using Euro Europe as an example, the beekeeping sector is vital for the European for Europe as it contributes economically with around 14 billion euros per year, and environmentally by maintaining the ecological balance and biological diversity. 84% of plant species and 76% of food production in Europe are dependent on pollination by wild and domestic bees. The Food Agriculture Organization, FAO, estimates that pollinators affect 35% of the world's crop production, increasing outputs of 87 of the leading food crops worldwide, plus many plant-derived medicines. Mr. Etienne Brunou, for example, chair of the Copper and Codeca, uh, says, if the market situation does not improve, the European beekeepers who derive a significant part of their income from beekeeping will not be able to continue. This slide shows a testimonial of a Mexican beekeeper who is suffering from adulteration in honey. Mr. Mupet claims he received the equivalent of $2.34 uh, for one kilo of his organic honey five years ago, but now the price has fallen to $1.74 per kilo. He, he says, I don't know if I can continue. I have seen many beekeepers disappear in the last two or three years. Uh, Jose Eduardo Mupet and other beekeepers in Mexico are campaigning internationally to investigate and expose the honey fraudsters and the looming risk to biodiversity from abandoned hives and declining bee populations. This slide shows testimonials of beekeepers in India who are suffering, who are also suffering from the adulteration in honey. The first gentleman from the left claims he spends the equivalent of $1.34 to produce one kilo of raw honey, but prices have fallen to 80 cents per kilo, which is in line with the prices offered by Chinese companies for sugar syrups. One of the reasons for the reduction in prices of raw honey is the production of so-called unripe honey. This will be further explained in a minute. But is this honey? It not, it is not. It is not in line with the definition of honey in Codex Alimentarius, the European Honey Directive, and the new honey standards by the US Pharmacopeia. Only the unique natural transformation of nectar into honey made by bees, which may take several days under natural conditions, guarantees the final physical, biochemical, and healthy properties of the honey. It is not only about syrups, sugar syrups in the honey. As the beekeeper on the right side states, if there are no beekeepers in bees, who will pollinate the fields? A continued decline in the bee population in beekeepers is a big threat to food security, as, bee, as bees are responsible for pollination of food crops, as we have seen a couple of minutes ago. Adulteration in honey is a serious problem and needs to be tackled more effectively. We all as government, beekeepers, industry, and consumers have responsibility here. There are multiple modes of adulteration in honey. The most common is the addition of cheap, uh, cheap uh, sugar syrups to stretch honey and increase profit. The botanical geographical origin is falsified, for example, to circumvent bans 
tariff rules or additional testing. Autofiltration is used to mask the real country of origin by removing, for example, the pollen from the honey. Transshipment often goes along with autofiltration and means sending the honey to an intermediate country and relabel it as a product of that country to disguise its real origin. Unripe honey means the honey, better said nectar, as it is not yet finished by the bees, is harvested from the hive and has a high moisture content. This, allow, uh, this allows production volumes to be doubled, tripled, and is one of the main reasons for the fall in raw prices honey, uh, for the fall in raw prices in, uh, in the last years. The nectar is then artificially dried after it is harvested, and off flavors, for example, or other unwished substances like antibiotics are filtered out using so-called wedging technology. Also, pollen may be removed or added to mask origin. And sugar syrups can also be added to meet the different market prices. Last but not least, supplemental bee feeding with sugar syrups during the main nectar flow period or honey production time conflicts with the legal definition of honey in the European Union Directive and is considered adulteration. As honey adulterations are getting more and more sophisticated with the new sugar syrups that can closely mimic honey and, the, and new types of adulterations, it is important to apply advanced analytical screening methods which have the potential to assess the samples in a comprehensive way and which have the potential to be extended to further parameters. NMR as a technique fulfills those criteria and is the technique of choice for the battle against honey fraud. Before introducing NMR and the honey profiling method, Leah will give you now an overview about current techniques for honey testing. Thank you so far for your attention. Thank you, Thomas. It is common to say that there are as many methods for testing authenticity of the honey as there are modes of adulteration. The most common and often also the only method applied in the past to test authenticity of imported honey is the AOAC isotope ratio mass spectrometry method. This method enables to detect adulteration using sugar syrups produced from C4 plants, such as corn and sugarcane. However, it cannot detect adulteration using syrups produced from C3 plants. As Fordster got quickly aware about these facts, most of the intentional dilutions with sugar syrups nowadays are done with uh, syrups from C3 plants like rice, beet, or wheat. So as a consequence, this method alone is not sufficient anymore to guarantee authenticity of honey. In fact, there are less than one-fifth of the adulterated samples in our database that have been detected as adulterated by this method while all the others have passed this test. There are many other methods available, as I mentioned. Uh, the older methods are, for instance, uh, foreign enzymes or rice syrup markers. These are specific methods to one adulteration mode. So if the test is positive, you know what type of syrup was used. But the major drawback is that you are blind to anything else, so any other type of adulteration that you are not looking for. And furthermore, the fraudster also found ways to get rid of these macro enzymes, and therefore nowadays the performances of such methods are uh, quite low. There is another procedure based on IRMS coupled with liquid chromatography that has been developed. There are two main methods available. They both target C3 and C4 sugar syrups. But uh, these two methods use different uh, criteria for authenticity. The percentage of detection of adulteration uh, of sugar syrups with uh, such methods is around 80% less than with NMR, according to a large stud study that was performed by uh, our customer, Fanny Michaud, involving more than 5,000 samples uh, and also covering uh, many different countries and varieties in order to be representative. 
DNMR technique started to be used for honey analysis several years ago. And the beauty of this method is that it can constantly expand. Brooker introduced the first version in 2015. And in the meanwhile, we can detect roughly 78% of adulteration with sugar syrups thanks to a very large database of 28,000 samples. It is also the only method which on top of sugar syrups can also um, verify consistency with declared origins and also to screen for atypical samples. NMR has been acknowledged to be by far the best harmonized methods during the 2019 uh, Apimondia Congress at a round table on adulterations. The parameters and purity criteria used to assess authenticity of honey uh, with NMR are regularly discussed in technical meetings uh, which gather cooperation partners but also independent honey experts. In recent years, we have seen introduction of high resolution mass spectrometry, which is an interesting uh, technique with potential. Currently, there are at least four methods on the market, but these methods are um, not harmonized, they are all different. And also, there are no random study available so far showing the performances in comparison to other techniques. Uh, some of these methods uh, did not rely on a database to identify and validate the markers used uh, and make sure that they cannot be found naturally in some types of honey. So um, in the next step, I would like to give also from Booker's side some guidelines uh, and good practices about uh, um, developing such methods and the importance of uh, databases. So we strongly believe that databases are not reserved exclusively to statistical analysis. The Brooker sugar syrup test, in fact, is not a statistical analysis, but still we are using a large database. And these databases are essential uh, in order to determine what is the normal concentration for a given parameter because the diversity of honey is uh, is very large and also the diversity of adulteration is very large and this has to be investigated and covered. I will give an example. Um, to, in order to determine the concentration of turanos in honey, you do not need a database. But if you want to know what is the normal concentration of turanos in pure honey, um, then you need to analyze really different types of honey of different origins, types, and also different types of adulterated honeys. And such considerations are independent of the techniques that is applied. And thus, it applies for very simple techniques, like, for instance, beta fructofuranolinase, but also for uh, more complex screening techniques like NMR and HRNS. And this database, as I said, is really key in order to minimize risks of uh, wrong results. So good practices also include in our view that the database should be large and representative of honey's diversity. So taking into account as many countries, floral sources, blends, seasons, and production modes as possible. The database should not contain only honey staking at a beehive. Even though the risk may be more limited, um, it is also very important to cover blends uh, in order to be also representative of what is sold in retailer shops and on international market, because these are then also usually the samples that somebody wants to analyze. The database should be regularly expanded and validated with samples from new harvests in order to take into account seasons, eventual climatic changes, as well as production mode uh, changes. Another important aspect is that the database should contain samples which are known to be adulterated in different ways, yeah? in, in order to reflect the real adulterated samples on the market. So that's why it's very important not only to concentrate on lab, uh, on lab mixtures. And finally, of course, very important that the samples used as authentic for a database should be trustful and the trust cannot only rely on the, on the, um, the trust in the supply chain. It's also very important to be confirmed by analytical technique 
And here, the AOAC standard is not sufficient because of the limitations we have seen before. And we really recommend the application of uh, many different analytical techniques in order to have a good confidence in the samples. And even samples taken directly at the beehives um, are not necessarily 100% uh, safe because we can never exclude some residues of sugar syrups from bee feeding. So it is, um, it is important to have a very large and diverse database and taking uh, all these aspects into consideration. And with this, we have put a tremendous amount of work together with recognized experts in the honey field to develop a robust and reliable database. The first version of the database has been launched in 2015 with approximately 4,000 samples, while we are currently at 28,000. The honey profiling database is dynamic and it's constantly growing, allowing the method to uncover more adulterations. The Brooker database is by far the largest and more representative international honey database with more than 50 countries, 100 monofloral sources, as well as a multitude of different polyfloral mixtures. There are many different seasons, production years, plans, and production modes covered in this database. The adulterated samples with sugar syrups account for 10% of all samples. It includes some lab mixtures, but also the majority are real uh, adulterated samples um, which are sold on the market in order to be as close as possible to the reality. And each sample has gone through a testing scheme with roughly, uh, in average, 10 tests, including ARIRMS, EALCIRMS, foreign oligosaccharides, foreign amylase, beta furanosidase, pollen analysis, in addition, of course, uh, to the NMR. To, to finish, the whole value chain is represented with samples taken directly at beehives, blends of honeys in a particular country, as well as processed and blended honeys uh, of different sources. And thus, the database is well representing the international market of honey. So uh, before explaining the method in more details, uh, maybe you are not familiar with NMR and I'd like to explain it um, in a, a simple way. So NMR stands for nuclear magnetic resonance, but nuclear here does not refer to ionizing, ionizing radiation and radioactivity. Yeah, so please don't be afraid. This simply refers to the nuclei observed, and in this case, uh, what we apply is proton analysis. So it is basically the observation of proton. Yeah? So pro in proton and MR spectra, you observe uh, all molecules containing protons in a certain concentration range. It is possible to identify the molecules present in the honey thanks to the particular signal patterns, which are really unique for each molecule. And it's also possible um, to quantify the concentration of the molecules thanks to the intensity of uh, the signals. The proton and MR spectra are highly reproducible, even from lab to lab, if the same procedures, of course, are applied um, for analysis. And for this reason, proton and MR profiles of honey can really be regarded as the fingerprint of the sample. So honey profiling uh, method is um, based on a database of 28,500 uh, samples, as mentioned before, and it covers um, different uh, aspects. So it's a very comprehensive test. It includes an advanced detection of evolving modes of honey adulteration, um, compliance check for country of origin and for monovarietal honeys, an analysis of the composition of honey. Uh, there are 36 parameters uh, for which the concentrations are obtained. And also there is detection of atypical samples. And finally, analysis of uh, regulated parameters like HMF, uh, sucrose, and glucose plus fructose. 
The overall analysis is performed in uh, 20 minutes. It is uh, fully automated and there is no need of an NMR expert to run the instrument. Bruker has ISO 17025 accreditation for this method. Um, this also means that we have uh, several uh, customers having the instrument that also um, obtained the accreditation in, easier, in an easier way because they could um, then refer to our accreditation for the data analysis part. This method is uh, now available on two platforms, two solutions. So the traditional one is the food screener on the left, and we have uh, introduced um, quite recently a new solution, which is the food screener essential honey. It's, it's important to note that both solutions will give the same um, results and the same scope of parameters. So um, in both cases, you get the same report for, uh, for a honey sample. The differences is more uh, related to the application and also to the market segment. So the food screen essential honey is really a, a compact solution uh, which is uh, dedicated and really focused on the honey profiling analysis only. So it's a solution that is meant for the industry as a cost-effective um, platform. So honey packers and um, honey association, for instance, on the other side, we have the food screener, which is a much more versatile solution, which also has per default the sample changer because it's intended also uh, to, to measure different types of food. Um, so it can, uh, in addition to honey, it can analyze um, with Booker method juice, wine, and coming soon, we will have olive oil. But also the customer could, with such a uh, system, uh, develop uh, their own methods for the food matrices. And also it's possible to add some uh, different application, for example, for chemistry or for um, example, sniff application. So it's very modular system and is therefore um, very adapted for governmental laboratories, for private laboratories, um, private testing labs, I mean, and also for CPGs, consumer packaged goods. So here uh, you can see this food screener platform and the different applications um, that uh, Bruker has developed and, and the olive oil that, that is coming in a, in a near future. So coming back uh, to the Honey Profiling 3.0, I would like to explain a little bit more in details uh, the test for sugar syrup detection. Uh, how this works. So uh, it is comparing profiles or fingerprints of uh, all the authentic samples with those of the adulterated sample. And in this way, it's possible to find uh, the markers that um, makes the difference. The, the approach uh, used to identify the markers is the following. You can imagine that this spectra that you see on the uh, right side are split in thousands of small regions, uh, what we also call variables. And the intensities of these regions are then compared between the authentic and the adulterated samples in order to find what is the best combination of markers to differentiate between authentic and adulterated. So the markers here, they correspond to signal intensity or intensity ratios of different spectral regions. And in most of the cases, the compounds behind in course, yeah, which are in these regions, they are not known, yeah, except for a very few uh, that we have listed in our analytical reports. And when thresholds are applied for this marker, the condition applied is to minimize the false positive results, which means avoiding uh, that authentic samples are detected as adulterated. The consequence is that we accept a, a bit more adulterated samples that will pass still the test, but then uh, we have a very high uh, trust in when a sample is detected as adulterated uh, that, that it is indeed adulterated. And that is very important to give um, a good certainty in a, in a failing result. 
and the test has been extensively validated and fully documented in the validation file, which has been audited by the German accreditation body DAX, and for which Booker Laboratory received the ISO 17025 accreditation. Once these markers have been identified, the detection of the sugar syrups uh, do rely on the analysis of the concentration or intensities of, of this specific marker. So this is not a statistical approach, but it's a classical targeted approach. The honey profiling report uh, uses several tens of markers. And the list of markers vary from one honey to the other because we have no, in the meanwhile, markers that are specific for a dedicated country of origin or for a dedicated variety of honey. The values that are obtained are then compared to the thresholds uh, for purity. And in case that there is one or several markers that exceed the max threshold or are below the minimum threshold for purity, then there is really a very strong indication for presence of sugar syrups. Besides uh, adulteration with sugar syrups, I also would like to mention the topic of country of origin and variety, which in our opinion is very important and gaining more and more importance nowadays. Because Enema has this potential in addition to analyze for origin of honey. And that makes the technique even more versatile with the possibility to verify declaration, but also to make a prediction of the possible origins in case of non-conformity. And we also think that origin should not be totally disentangled from sugar syrups, because the country of origin and adulteration related to it can often also give a hint on the samples tested. Such analysis of origin require here also, again, the usage of an international database so that the system can find what makes one origin special um, and different in, um, compared to the others. Because sometimes we get requests uh, from laboratories which would like to develop a database just for one country. We don't advise for that because if only one country is covered, the test cannot know what makes it different from the others and then maybe it will focus on um, parameters that are not specific for this honey. And then when you will measure a sample coming from another country, it may look compliant while it is not simply because it was looking to, to the wrong parameters. So therefore, we really think it's important to have this international and global database. Another question that is frequent is about the number of samples required per origin. Here, it depends, of course. Uh, it's based on experience and on the reality. Some origins are easier to differentiate from others, but in general, as a we can say as a general rule, that it should be in the minimum in the range of uh, 200 uh, or 250 samples. And uh, to finish for my part, I also would like to add one important thing, um, a myth that uh, follows up uh, that uh, saying that the Booker Honey profiling database is secret and cannot be independently audited. So for sure, our database is a proprietary database and we have put tremendous amount of work together with our partners in order to develop this over several years. Nevertheless, um, Brooker is completely, um, does completely agree to share details about the method and the related database to expert witnesses that are called upon in the court system. So in such cases, um, on demand, we can provide such information to the expert mandated by court. And in addition, Brooker is also willing and even really open to cooperate with selected regulatory institution um, over the world in giving access rights to the database and to the method validation files for the sake of external validation of our method and also to allow these entities to use the method for official purposes. As we saw before, honey adulterations are getting more and more sophisticated with new sugar syrups that can closely mimic honey and new types of adulterations. 
Lea presented the NMR as a powerful and advanced analytical technique for authenticity controlling of honey, as it can ac access uh, the samples in a comprehensive way, targeted and non-targeted wise. As a consequence, NMR is seeing an increased adoption globally. The government authorities in various countries are giving food authenticity increased attention. Industry as well is also adoption, adopting uh, NMR for brand and business protection and are using NMR also as a tool to increase sales. Let me give you some examples of adoption of NMR and the value it offers for the different adopters. The Customs and Border Protection in the United States of America has adopted the NMR and the food screener for testing imported honeys. As depending on the country, the tariffs applied can be very different. The US government has now a solution that allows them to tackle country of origin fraud and reduce and avoid tax evasion. Customs and Border Protection will use Brooker's honey profiling method and will also test honeys for purity. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency is using NMR in their surveillance activities as part of ongoing efforts to detect misrepresentation of honey adulterated with foreign sugars in both domestic and imported honey sold in Canada. Another important uh, example is the adoption of NMR, of NMR by the government of India, who made NMR mandatory in August 2020 for all honeys meant to be exported to USA. As the honey exporting countries are competing with each other, India's intent is to protect and to increase the export business of honey. CVUA, an official food control authority in Germany, is also using NMR since many, many years for control of food, but also non-food products like personal care items. This slide shows examples of food products tested in daily routine by the German Food Control Authority, CVUA. This shows how versatile NMR is as a technique, and it is not limited to food analysis only. I would like to give you now two examples from the industry. Company Next in Argentina was one of the first adopters of the new food screen essential honey, as presented before by Lea. Nexco is an Argentine company specialized in honey processing and trade. They are leading supplier of high quality honey with an annual production of about 60,000 tons, produced by 3 million hives, widely distributed in the country. For Nexco, as a honey exporter, it is important to attest the compliance of origin and purity to their buyers. For Nexco, NMR testing has become a must when selling honey to their accounts in different markets like Europe, USA and Japan. Last but not least, uh, Company Maes. Uh, which is based in Spain, uh, together with company Nexco, uh, they were uh, uh, one of the first uh, adopters of the food screen essential honey of our new solution. They are the uh, company Maes is the largest packer and biggest exporter of honey in Spain. They are present in more than 30 countries on five continents. For company Maes, it was important to have a cost effective push button solution that allows them to test also for origin besides purity, as Maes also imports honey from various countries. Also important for, for company Maes was to be able to run the food screen essential honey without any previous NMR expertise, allowing them to qu quickly characterize the honeys before they leave the company and are commercialized. With this, we finish our today's presentation. Leah and I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Stay healthy and safe and goodbye.